Good evening. Welcome to our service here at Ten and Fern Free Church. As we uh, go into another lockdown, please uh, feel free to be in touch with myself or Alistair. Our contact details are on the screen and we would welcome uh, you giving us a call. We are here this evening, although separated, to worship God together. Let's do that as we sing in Psalm 105 in the Sing Psalms, the tune is Foundation. From the beginning, give thanks to the Lord God and call on his name, his wonderful deeds to the nations proclaim. Let's sing to God's praise. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, as we do come uh, this evening, we want to give thanks to you as we've been singing. Thanks to you that although we are separated from one another, although we cannot worship together for these uh, weeks in our church buildings, we are able to worship together in this way. This is the way that you have uh, orchestrated us to come and uh, gather to hear the word of God being preached. And we know, Lord, that you accompany the preached word with your power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we come tonight, Lord, expectantly. We want to hear what God the Lord is saying to us. We believe that as we watch this service, as we enter and engage in this worship, we know that you can feed the Christians. You can strengthen them and help them and encourage them this evening. But we also know, Lord, and we pray that you can reach those hearts and homes throughout Tain and throughout our villages who are, who are darkened to the gospel, cold to the good news. We pray, Lord, that you would warm their hearts this evening, that they would see Jesus, that they could see that they can be set free from the imprisonment of their sin, that they can be liberated into the glorious light of your truth. So Lord, our prayer tonight as a congregation scattered throughout this area is that you would do wonderful miracles in our midst all around us. Father, we want to pray for our congregations throughout our denomination and we pray uh, this evening for Lachi, uh, the Minister of uh, 
of Loch Broom and Coycoch Free Church. We ask that you would be with him and his wife CJ and their family. And Lord, we just thank you for how they have been able to uh, partner with Alt Bay, with Dan Patterson, and be able to share uh, the gospel as they've reached out to their communities there in Wester Ross. Lord, we pray in particular for uh, men to be raised up in the Yalapul congregation. That's as they've uh, had two of their men pass into glory from the office of deacon and elder in recent years. Lord, we pray that you would uh, provide them with uh, others who can fill these positions, who can be leaders in that community, leading people, men and women, children, to the good news of Jesus. And Lord, we want to pray that the community, the congregation, would be often in communication to you, calling out to you, and that they would be praying to the Lord our God who hears and who answers us. Father, it's been uh, a week where we've seen great turmoil in America, and we do indeed pray. We pray for peace. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, be there. We pray that you would be with these leaders seeking to guide that vast country as we pray for our own leaders here in the United Kingdom as we seek to navigate our way through uh, this global pandemic. Father, we pray for Boris Johnson and for Nicola Sturgeon. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, be with them, that you would continue to energise them and strengthen them physically every day. Oh, and we long to hear of them turning spiritually to you for guidance and help. So Lord, we just ask that you would bless our time of worship uh, today. Be with us as a congregation. Be with each one in all the different uh, challenges that may be going on in some people's lives. And as we seek to navigate our own way through this virus, Keep us safe, keep us well, and help us to keep our eyes on Christ alone. We ask it in your name. Amen. We're going to uh, read God's word as we continue uh, studying the book of Galatians in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 3 and uh, from verse 15. Galatians 3 and verse 15. 15. The last sermon we did was entitled The Christmas Tree as we looked at the first half of uh, verse of chapter 3 and now this is prison break as we look at the second half of this chapter. Let's hear God's word. Brothers, Paul says, let me take an example from everyday life just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. What I mean is this. The law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on a promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. What then was the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was put into effect through angels by a mediator. A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But... The scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin. 
so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. This is the word of God. Now, the Christmas holidays are the ideal time to dig out the board games. I don't think, though, that any game is more divisive for families to play than Monopoly. You really get to see who is the competitive one in the family, who is ruthless as they build their empire and take away all their money. Can you work out that we were playing Monopoly over the last couple of weeks? But one of the more uh, comical aspects of the game is when a player gets sent to jail. In, in jail they are stuck. They can't collect their £200 for passing go. They, they cannot add to their properties. They, they cannot be part of the game until they play their way out or pay the fine. But here in Galatians 3, there's nothing to laugh about the facts Paul lays out for us. The truth of the matter is in verse 22. Scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin. The law has put us in prison. But we have seen time and time again as we've studied Galatians, that the certain Jews, they held the law up as the standard of requirement. They were uh, corrupting the Gentile converts, saying, well, yes, you believe in Jesus, but you also need to keep all of these laws perfectly if you want to get into heaven. And from the passage that uh, we read just now, from verse 15 onwards, Paul is rebuking them. And he's saying to both the Jews and the Gentiles, you know, before the law was ever given, God made a promise. He made a promise with Abraham. And so no matter what else is put in place, in other words, the law, no matter what else is taken away, that original promise made by God will not be altered and it will be kept. So what was the promise? Well, we can summarize it from Genesis twenty-two eighteen, 18. Through your seed, Abraham, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. In other words, someone is going to come from Abraham's family line who can set us free. Friends, our lives are not dependent on the roll of a dice. Our lives depend on what we do with Christ. So first of all, we're going to see today our imprisonment and then our identity. Our imprisonment and then our identity. So first of all, we're sent to prison. If the law was never meant to override the promises given to Abraham or to be the way that we get into heaven, We should be asking the question which Paul expected in verse 19. What then was the purpose of the law? Paul asks the question and he answers his own question too. You see, the law acts like a mirror. It reveals things to us. Things which we 
would ordinarily not have seen. First of all, the law shows us how high the bar is set. The law clearly lays out God's standard of perfection and his holiness. It uh, supervises us and restricts our bad behaviour, listing punishments for disobedience, but guiding us to behave in a manner pleasing to God. When we compare our actions, the way we live our lives with the law, we can now see where we have committed sin. We notice that God demands that we be all the way up here, but in reality, we spend most of our time all the way down here. John Stott says that the purpose of the law was to lift the lid of man's respectability and to disclose what he is really underneath. Sinful, rebellious, guilty, under the judgment of God and helpless to save himself. This is what the law does. But we come to our key text today and it's in verse 22. Verse 22, it arrests us and it carries us to prison. And when I say us, I mean all of us, every single one of you watching this tonight. You may think that, well, you have no criminal record, you've never broken the law, or at least you've never been caught breaking the law. But Paul is telling us here that you have broken God's law and you've broken all of it. Your record it isn't clean. It has stamped on it guilty and condemned. I remember our youth club uh, going to visit the police station one evening. All of us children, we were shown around. We had our fingerprints taken. We were even put into the cells for just a few moments. And that was scary enough. But when the law carries us to prison, it's not just for a few moments. Friends, it's not even for a life sentence. It will be for eternity. As we examine the law of God and are locked up by the law of God in verse 23, we must realise our total inability to keep the law of God. It's as we see the law, we see that we need help. We see that we need to be saved. We see that we need to be set free. This is a second purpose of the law, that there is only one we see who can rescue us from the law, who can liberate us from this prison that we are in. The seed of Abraham, the son of God, Christ Jesus, our Lord. This past week, it marked 15 years since I was released from that prison. I, nor any of us, became Christians because we finally climbed to the, to the summit of God's law. No, for me it was 15 years ago, standing in the middle of my village, that the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see what the law had been saying. That I am a sinner and I am in total need of a saviour. Otherwise I will rot in this prison cell. It was only faith that could break me out of prison. It is only faith that can break us all out of prison. But we're not going to do it like we see it in the movies. We're not going to hatch some elaborate scheme and dig a tunnel with a teaspoon. No, we don't need to do any of that. Instead, the offer to be set free has been given by the one who holds the key. The prison guard who stands on the other side of the bars offers to unlock the gate and let you out. This is your get out of jail free card. 
the end of verse 22. The scripture declares the whole world is a prisoner of sin so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. The promise, freedom, is given to those who believe. To those who hold up their hands and say, I am a sinner, I am guilty and I deserve punishment. But then you think about the prison guard. How can he just let us walk out? Well, when the prison guard is accused of being unjust, they say you can't set those prisoners free. You can't just let them go. The guard simply points out that the freed prisoner's sentence has been completely fulfilled. By who? By himself. You see, as he unlocked the gate and allowed us to walk out, he locked himself behind us. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Any of us as Christians can look back on the years of uh, since we were saved and set free. As I look back on these 15 years, I realise how close sin has clung to me. How many times I have failed and fallen short on this chart of holiness. And even though I am not who I want to be, I am not who I hope to be after 15 years. Nevertheless, I am no longer who I used to be. I am no longer imprisoned. I now have a new identity. This brings us secondly to our identity. Whenever a prisoner is released, the great desire is to see that individual reintegrate to the community. What we don't want to see is them falling back into old habits, the old crowd and reoffending. There is the opportunity for a fresh start to have a new identity. Well, as we exit our own prison cell, we are given a new identity. One that sounds too good to be true. There it is in verse 26. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. This was revolutionary for Gentile ears because the traditional Jews, they insisted that your standing before God, it was measured by your obedience to the law. To truly be close to God, to be considered sons of God, you had to be extremely observant to the law, just as the scribes and the Pharisees were. But here Paul says, you can be considered sons and daughters of God in a completely different way, through faith in Christ Jesus. You know, in the scriptures, God is proclaimed as the universal creator. He created all things. He is proclaimed as the universal king. He is king over all people. But he is not the universal father. He is only father to those who believe in Christ, to those whom he has adopted into his family. To be among the sons of God, it means that we have a special relationship with God. A special relationship with him as a loving and a caring father. It's a place of closeness, a place of affection, a place of special care and attention. And tonight, where else would you rather be? With our world and all its uncertainty and lack of security and unpredictability 
than in the safe arms of our Heavenly Father. This is the privilege, this is the blessing of the sons and daughters of God. And he goes on in verse 27. He says, all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. We have the picture here of dressing ourselves as we have all done this morning. How we dress, it has a real impact on how we appear to others. We need to know how to address appropriately for each occasion. And Paul says to us, your appropriate clothing for each day is to put on Christ. People should see that you belong to him as they look at your life. You should live with the awareness that you are adorned with Jesus. You know, we wear certain clothes to identify ourselves as belonging to some sports team or some school or some workplace. But with Christ as our clothing, our ultimate identity is as a Christian before anything else. Before you are a teacher, before you are a pupil, before you are a fan of that sports team, before you are even a minister, you are a Christian. We put on Christ. But all the barriers that separate people in this world, they come down in Christ. In verse 28, Paul picks out three. The cultural barrier, Jew and Greek. And the class barrier, neither slave nor free. And the gender barrier, neither male or female. We are all one, Paul says, in Christ Jesus. Sadly, however, some Christians still draw the lines today. Some draw lines between denominations, some draw lines between races, some draw lines between nations, some draw lines between political parties, and some draw lines between economic classes. In doing so, they have drawn a line that Jesus died on the cross to erase. Of course, there are still differences between people. And Paul knew that there were still differences between the Jew and the Greek and the way that he reached out to them, evangelized them, was, was different. The slave still has the obligation to obey his master. As an employee, you must still obey your employer, even though you may both be Christians. There are different roles for the man and the woman in the marriage and in the church. There are different roles. Differences in role and in function, but none in standing before God through faith in Christ Jesus. This last section that we've just looked at from verse 26 to 29, you know, it stretches our horizons and it should thrill our hearts with all that we are, with all that we have, through faith in Jesus. In verse 26, it reaches upwards. Have a look. It says that we are sons of God. Verse 28, it spans the globe. We are united with every other Christian. We are one in Christ, regardless of culture or class or gender. In verse 29, it looks back through history. With our identity in Christ, we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All that God promised Abraham, he has fulfilled and will fulfill in his son Jesus. So all that God promised, we will enjoy as his children. But this new identity, our new clothes, our breaking free from prison, it all hangs on the very subtle line that Paul says in conclusion in verse 29. If you belong to Christ.
Do you belong to Christ? The issues are not about where you live, what church you attend, what colour your skin is. The great issue for you this evening is answering this question in your heart. Do you belong to Christ? Because if you do belong to Christ, it enables you to answer the most basic of all human questions. Who am I? And you can answer, in Christ I am a son or daughter of God. In Christ I am united to all the redeemed people of God, past, present and future. In Christ I am set free from prison. In Christ I have a new identity. In Christ I will be led safely home. Life, it's not a game. Our lives are not dependent on the roll of a dice. Our lives depend on what we do with Christ. Let's pray. O Lord our God, our Heavenly Father, we recognise that through the law we see our sin. We see that it carries us to prison. It uh, brings us to darkness. We pray that it does so that in our darkness, in our lostness, we see the Saviour. We thank you for the law that points us to Abraham's seed, to Jesus Christ. Our prayer this evening is that we would realise, that we would answer in the affirmative to the question, am I Christ's. We leave all of this, your word and your work, to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let us uh, conclude by uh, singing together in Psalm 72 the words uh, in the Scottish Psalter, Psalm 72, to the tune Effingham. His name forever shall endure. Last like the sun it shall. Men shall be blessed in him and blessed. All nations shall him call. Let us sing. And we have been set free. And we are Christ's. To his praise and glory. God's blessing. Now may grace 
mercy and peace from God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you both now and forevermore. Amen.